It's a huge problem. Well, let me talk. Quiet. Bing, bing, bing. Bum, bum. Go home to mommy. Go home. Bye. Go home to mommy. Bing, bing, bum, bum. I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer before getting into this video. For whatever reason, the first two minutes or so, my mic didn't record, so the first two minutes of this video are gonna be kind of poor audio quality. Sorry if that bothers some of you guys, and let's get into the video. Hi. Today I'm feeling a really weird mix of excitement and pure terror, and I'm sure from the title of this video you guys can all understand why I'm feeling that way. Today's video is the very first video of an in-depth series that I'm starting on my channel that I'm really excited to bring out. In this series, I'm gonna do deep dives onto different public figures and the scams that they participated in. Before we get into it, today's comment in this video is, My mind just doesn't have the power to understand a toxic shower. What can this concept even mean? I thought a shower would keep me clean. Is there there a shampoo filled with soil or shower gel made of crude oil? Of such things I have never heard, the whole idea just sounds absurd. Also, since I forgot to say this in the video, if you enjoy deep dives and like to analyze, don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this video, don't forget to like this video. It helps push the video out to more unique viewers like yourself. So today we are doing a deep dive into the scams that Donald Trump has participated in as well as some of the really shady business dealings. A ton of you guys requested that I do this video and after researching, I can definitely understand why. I will be leaving politics out of this video, not because I don't have a stance on politics, but because I think Donald Trump's business dealings and scams that he's participated in or alleged scams considering Trump likes to sue. I think those can speak for themselves without even adding the political element. And I also think it's important to understand those completely apart from politics. No matter where you stand on the political spectrum, I think we can all find something valuable from this video. That being said, I do understand that this video is on a prominent political figure, so if this video hurts your feelings, I am so sorry. Maybe don't be such a snowflake, facts over feelings, right? I'm sorry, sometimes I can be a sarcastic bitch. Whoever you think would be interesting to do this type of video, definitely leave it in the comments. And let's get into it. In order to fully understand Donald Trump's scams and shady businesses, I think it's important to understand his history a little bit, so I'll explain it super briefly in case you didn't know some aspects of it. Donald Trump was born and raised in Queens and attended the Fordham, right? Yeah, Fordham University for two years. Trump received a bachelor's degree in economics from the Wharton School of Pennsylvania? His father, Frederick Christ Trump, was a prominent real estate developer in New York City. In 1971, Donald Trump became the president of his father's real estate business, renamed it the Trump Organization, and tried to expand operations. Getting into mainly casinos and from what it seems like rentals, apartments, and condos, high-end luxury rentals. Trump also started various side ventures, or side hustles, mainly through licensing his name. He owned the Miss Universe brand of beauty pageants from 1996 to 2015, and also, as most of you guys know, he produced and was the host of the reality TV show, The Apprentice. You fired. You fired. You fired. In April of 2020, Forbes estimated Trump's worth to be around 2.1 billion, and as we know, Forbes has never gotten anything wrong, especially when it comes to someone's net worth. They've never gotten a single thing wrong. We can always trust them with any sort of estimate that they give. Of course, most of us know about Trump's presidency and are currently living through it and its consequences, but that's not what this video is about. So let's get into the shady businesses and alleged scams that Trump participated in and how though Trump's entire brand or persona 
or prestige is built around him being an excellent businessman, but in reality, that might not be the case at all. I found the best way to do this video is kind of in a timeline format where I just kind of go off of the timeline throughout all of his business deals, though some of these deals or practices or scams took place over a long period of time. So we'll work with it. Bear with me as we go through this. I also wanted to mention a recent thing that came out about Trump and his tax records. A New York Times article came out about the president's taxes titled Long Concealed Records Show Trump's Chronic Losses and Years of Tax Avoidance. Most of us know from this article that he really only paid $750 in taxes. The Times obtained Donald Trump's tax information extending over more than two decades, revealing struggling properties, vast write-offs, an audit battle, and hundreds of millions in debt coming due. Donald J. Trump paid $750 in federal income taxes the year he won the presidency. In his first year in the White House, he paid another $750. He had paid no income taxes at all in 10 of the previous 15 years, largely because he reported losing much more money than he made. Even while declaring losses, he has managed to enjoy a lavish lifestyle by taking tax deductions on what most people would consider personal expenses, including residences, aircraft, and $70,000 in hairstyling for television. And there's also some other suspicious activity in the article that this TikToker pointed out. For example, planning to turn a historical estate into a golf course, declaring a property an investment property when it wasn't exactly, writing off personal legal expenses as business legal expenses, and paying Ivanka Trump as a consultant when really this doesn't seem to be the case. Ivanka Trump, while working as an employee of the Trump Organization, appears to have received consulting fees that also helped reduce the family's tax bill. As president, he has received more money from foreign sources and U.S. interest groups than previously known. First on our timeline of Trump's shady business dealings was in 1973 when the Department of Justice sued Trump and his father. The Department of Justice sued Trump and his father for housing discrimination at around 39 different sites in New York. It was reported that Trump management had refused to rent or even negotiate rentals due to someone's race or the color of their skin. When the black testers came, they were shown, they, they may have been shown apartments, but were told nothing was available. Whereas when the white testers came, yes, there were, were things that were available. That would be the norm. And if the Trumps did rent to a black person, Goldweber recalls, they would do so only at one building in Brooklyn, reserving the other buildings for white tenants. In response to this suit, the Trumps hired their own attorney and tried to sue the Justice Department for a hundred million in a counter suit. But in the end, this was not entirely successful and they ended up settling the case and promising to no longer discriminate. Another really interesting thing about Trump is his possible alleged mafia ties from 1970 and beyond. Over the years, Trump has been continually linked to the mafia. Most of the connections found are just kind of interactions with known mobsters, which isn't entirely uncommon for someone in the casino and construction businesses. The GOP presidential nominee sometimes dealt with people connected to organized crime in his Atlantic City and New York real estate work. And though Trump claims that many of these connections were unbeknownst to him, many don't believe that. And many believe that at least back in the day, he had some involvement with the mob. Back in 1980, when Trump launched his first casino here, some of his business partners worked for the mafia. The picture in New York was no better. For example, Khan, Trump's lawyer, or Khan, not entirely sure how it's pronounced, also represented the Genovese crime family's boss, Tony Salerno. There's also been reports of other shady activities surrounding Trump and the mob, like Trump paying twice the market rate to a mob figure for land underneath Trump Plaza in Atlantic City. For a person whose entire career is in real estate to pay twice the market rate for something, I can only think of two reasons why. Either A, they are really bad at what they do and they're a really bad businessman, or B, 
there's something shady going on. Trump has also been reportedly very close with Robert Lee Booty, an associate of John Gotti. Donald Trump says he didn't know mob figure Robert Labuddy, but recently resurfaced video seems to tell a different story. Footage from a professional wrestling event in 1988 shows Trump sitting next to Labuddy. Trump invited Labuddy on his yacht and his helicopter at various points. And weirdest of all, Trump's company even bought Labuddy nine luxury cars. Trump bought someone who has a known connection with the mob nine luxury cars. Of course, it's important to note that Trump has not been charged with anything in regards to these ties. And I think most of us will never fully know the extent of his connections with the mob. Another shady thing that Trump participated in is having undocumented Polish workers on a real estate project in 1980. Is it accurate to say that Trump Tower, the construction of it began on the backs of Polish workers who are unpaid? Oh, absolutely. In order to build the famous or infamous Trump Tower, all the builders had to demolish the Bonwit Teller Store, which was a beloved Art Deco building in New York City. Tearing down the Bonwit building had to be done fast. So in order to tear down the Bonwit building quickly, 200 undocumented Polish workers were hired to do the project. The workers were treated terribly, getting paid $5 an hour, if anything, to do back-breaking work. And when the workers complained, they were allegedly threatened with deportation. In 1991, a federal judge found Trump and others guilty of conspiring to avoid paying union pension and welfare for the undocumented workers. Daniel Sullivan, a labor relations consultant who had been convicted of tax evasion, testified that during the demolition, Trump himself knew he was using illegal workers on the site. There's no question in my mind. I mean, he said it to me. The decision was appealed and ultimately settled privately in 1999. The next shady thing that Trump was found to be doing was intimidating tenants from 1981 to 1986. In 1981, Trump bought an older building in South Central Park. He claimed that the existing structure was a complete dump, but that the land itself would be a great place to build luxury condos. The thing is, the tenants who were already living in that dump didn't want to move just so that their residence could be torn down and a luxury condo building could be built, you know, one that they couldn't afford. There is one thing Donald Trump has not been able to control, the tenants who live in this building at 100 Central Park South a building Trump bought a few years back. It's filled with rent-controlled apartments occupied by tenants who are now angry because they say that Trump is trying to get them out by hook or crook. Like most developers, he wants to evict the tenants so he can build expensive new apartments and charge a bundle for them. And like most developers, he's having trouble doing it. So Trump tried to intimidate the tenants as much as possible to get them to leave. He threatened eviction, he cut off their heat and water. Building management refused to make repairs and tenants even claimed in court that mushrooms grew on their carpet from a leak. He wanders out because he wants a building. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? How about us? There we go. What are we going to do? He's a very arrogant human being who really doesn't care about uh, the lives of people like you see in this room here. He bought the building knowing exactly what this building was earning and exactly what the status of the building was. And yet now Donald would like to wipe out the rent control, rent stabilization laws with one snap of his own <coughs> golden fingers. And that's not the way this world works. Almost nobody believes that you're going to be able to get those tenants out of there. This is a fight that's going to go on and on and on. Could be, could be. We'll see what happens. Trump even had newspaper ads put all over the city that offered to house the homeless in the empty units, which would be a great philanthropic effort if it was something that he actually intended to do. But in his book, The Art of the Deal, he claimed himself that he never even intended to house anyone in that building in the first place. 
Trump also sued tenants for $10 million if they complained. Just seems honestly like such an evil thing to do, if I'm being honest, in my opinion. To buy a property and to do all of these mean things and every mean thing you can possibly do to kick people out of their own homes. That's just my opinion, but yeah, yikes. yikes. Eventually though, Trump actually lost this battle once again. What a great deal maker, right? Much artful of a deal. Very artful deal. Much dealing. Very business. And believe it or not, this dump of a building still stands today. Trump has also been fined for breaking casino rules on various occasions. In 1990, when Trump was having trouble with one of his casinos, the Trump Taj Mahal, Trump's father went into the casino and bought 700 chips, which were worth $3.5 million. The purchase helped the Trump Taj Mahal pay off a lot of its debts, though eventually it still went bankrupt. But Fred never used those chips and had absolutely no plans of gambling with those 700 chips. So because of this, the New Jersey Gaming Commission ruled that this entire instance was a loan that violated operating rules. New Jersey also fined Trump $200,000 for arranging to keep black employees away from his friend Robert Labuddy's gaming table. Yes, once again, Robert Labuddy, who has connections to the mob, Trump arranged to keep black employees away from his table. I'm noticing a lot of disturbing patterns here. On top of this, in 1991, the Casino Control Commission fined Trump $450,000 for the nine luxury cars that he bought LaBuddy, as mentioned earlier. In 2000, Trump was fined $250,000 for lobbying to try and prevent an Indian casino from opening up and competing with his casinos. Next, let's discuss the four bankruptcies. I declare bankruptcy that trump's companies went through in 1991 1992 2004 and 2009. in the late 1980s trump used junk bonds to build his trump taj mahal casino huge amounts of money uh, were invested in the building of the taj hundreds of millions of dollars but trump felt that he could complete the property he promised the Casino Control Commission. He's got all kinds of lines to the banks, major banks, one major bank. They'd love to dump money in my lap. Obviously, that's not exactly the way it turned out. He winds up relying totally on junk bonds. A junk bond is so lowly rated that there's a, a high probability that you're not going to get your money back. There were 675 million issued and a lot of the bonds were owned by small individuals. So little guys who weren't wealthy actually had a stake in that property. But Trump couldn't keep up with all of the high and increasing interest payments. So in 1991, his company declared bankruptcy. Because of this, he had to sell his yacht, his airline. It became clear that the Trump shuttle would not grow as an airline. Trump fired 100 employees. Just 18 months after the Trump shuttle launched, the airline had already lost $128 million. And half of his ownership of the casino. Only a year later, another one of Trump's casinos, the Trump Plaza, lost $550 million and also declared bankruptcy. And Trump gave up his stake in the casino. But by the time all was said and done, Trump had $900 million in personal debt. By 2004, Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts, weird name, was $1.8 billion in debt. The company filed for bankruptcy and emerged as Trump Entertainment Resorts. 
Trump himself was the chairman of the new company, but had absolutely no controlling stake in it. Five years later, after the real estate collapse, once again, Trump Entertainment Resorts went bankrupt and Trump completely resigned from the board. Trump claims that all of these bankruptcies are just the name of the game. It's how business is done. You use the laws of the country, the laws of the land, and I did. You're supposed to spend money to make money, right? And business is just all about constantly losing money. That's the point of it, right? You know you're doing something right when you're losing millions. That should be a new title for a book. There you go. If you're going bankrupt, you're doing something right. Whenever one of Trumpanies, Trumpanies, oh my gosh. I also think it's an interesting pattern that time and time again, whenever one of Trump's companies goes bankrupt, he's always the one that's kicked out or that loses any sort of controlling stake in the company. I don't think you would lose controlling stake of a company for no reason after bankruptcy, unless you were the cause of the bankruptcy, you know? I have never gone bankrupt, by the way. I have never. But out of no, hundreds but the, no, of deals, but the but sir, excuse me. That's your line, me. but the, your excuse companies have me. gone bankrupt. Out of hun what am I saying? He's right out to say, as he does on the campaign trail now, that he did not personally go bankrupt. But that's only because he was too big to go bankrupt. The banks had to keep him alive and breathing. And since then, he's become a wealthy man by selling the name that was based on failed projects. The real things that he built, where are they? So next, I'm gonna talk about the Trump Foundation, though this is something that kind of spans the entire timeline from 1988 up till semi-present day. The Trump Foundation has been one of the most controversial parts of Trump or one of the most aggravating parts for a lot of people. And obviously the Trump Foundation is the Trump family's charity foundation. Don't think there needed to be an explanation there, but just in case there needed to be. The interesting thing that I think is important to clarify is much of the money that comes through the foundation doesn't come from Trump himself. Trump structured the charity as almost a pass-through. The charity would go out and solicit donations from other people and then give those donations away to a charity as if it was coming from Trump himself. In a few cases, the foundation also reported making donations that it didn't make at all. And one of the weirdest donations that the Trump Foundation made was a $25,000 donation that it made to a group that supported the Florida Attorney General, Pam Bondi. Days after this, somehow, coincidentally, Pam Bondi completely squashed an investigation that was going on into Trump University and the Trump Institute, two very shady companies that Trump participated in, which we'll get into. There is also many reports of Trump using the charity money for his own personal gain, and it seemed like the foundation had broken IRS rules on self-dealing. Because of this, the foundation went under investigation by the New York Attorney General. I believe when it first went under investigation was in the year 2017. And in 2018, the New York Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, sued the president, all three of his children, and the Donald J. Trump Foundation and claimed that the charity was functioning as little more than just a personal checkbook for Donald Trump to serve his own business and political interests. New York Attorney General has filed a lawsuit against Donald J. J. Trump, rather, Foundation and its board of directors, alleging, quote, extensive and persistent violations of state and federal law. So what this lawsuit is basically saying is that you cannot use a charitable foundation uh, as your own personal piggy bank or your own personal slush fund. The allegations on the suit claimed that $10,000 was spent on a portrait of the president, $100,000 was used to settle a legal dispute with Palm Beach, $258,000 was used to settle lawsuits against Trump himself and his businesses, 
and $5,000 was used to advertise Trump and his hotels. The attorney general also accused the foundation of violating campaign finance laws by coordinating with the Trump campaign. And on top of all of this, the board of the foundation itself has never even held an official meeting. Sounds super legit. The charity was ordered to be shut down immediately, and Trump was asked by a judge to pay $2 million to actual, actual, legit charities. Trump tried to make this $2 million donation sound like a voluntary donation, and the Trump Foundation itself claimed that it was pleased to donate an additional $2 million to worthy organizations. Just a really weird way of phrasing, we are not a legit foundation and we had to pay money because we were found to not be legit. Yeah, all in the name of charity, right? And that brings us to the next alleged scam, Trump University, which took place from 2005 to 2010. At Trump University, we teach success. That's what it's all about, success. It's going to happen to you. In 2005, Trump announced a university to teach all of his real estate secrets to people just like you and me. Students paid as much as $35,000 for a university that was not accredited and not legit in any way. We started looking at Trump University and uh, discovered that it was a classic bait and switch scheme. It was a scam. Students would be suckered into paying for this university after attending a free seminar to learn how to get rich. You must be very aggressive. One passage from the playbook reads, if they complain about the price, remind them that Trump is the best. A set of playbooks for the sales team coach them on how to market the courses, even to single mothers with three children who quote, may need money for food. Money instructed the playbook is never a reason for not enrolling in Trump University. If they really believe in you and your product, they will find the money. Ads from the university promise that students would learn from Donald Trump's hand-picked instructors and learn all of Donald Trump's real estate secrets. If you don't learn from the people that we're going to be putting forward, and these are all people that are hand-picked by me, then uh, you're just not going to make it in terms of the world of success. When in reality, Trump had almost nothing to do with the curriculum or the instructors. Many students have come out and spoken out about how Trump University was just a total, total scam. scam and drained them of a lot of money and resources. I thought that I'm going to be a millionaire because Donald Trump is a millionaire and they were offering a course for people to get rich. This is the closest Mendez got to Trump during the course, a picture of her with a picture of Donald Trump. I really look at it like this, is, is say you go to a really nice restaurant and uh, really expensive restaurant, you eat this really gorgeous dinner, and the chef comes out near the end of your meal and asks you how you like the meal, and you really, really loved it. But then you, by the time you go home, you realize that uh, you've gotten food poisoning and you're really, really sick. What do you think about Trump University? I felt like I'd been poisoned. It's, I just felt like I was just duped and poisoned and ripped off. It wasn't even a university by any definition of the word. In 2010, the school finally shut down. And in 2016, Trump agreed to pay $25 million in a series of settlements from students who went to the school. Before that, Trump tried his best to intimidate the plaintiffs, aka his former students, by countersuing them, but that didn't work. He also tried to claim that the judge was biased because of his ethnicity. I have a judge who is a hater of Donald Trump, a hater. He's a hater. His name is Gonzalo Curiel. And he is not doing the right thing. The judge, who happens to be, we believe, Mexican, which is great. I think that's fine. You're invoking his race when talking about what whether or not he can do his job. Jack, I'm building a wall, okay? I'm building a wall. I'm trying to keep business out of Mexico. Mexico's fine. There's nothing... But he's American. Mexican, he's an American. Uh, he's a Mexican heritage. 
which is an interesting argument to make. At a similar time in 2005, the Trump Institute also opened up, Trump University and the Trump Institute, two competing academic institutes. Interesting. You'd think if you cared so much about education, you would just start one thing that was like all of the education in one place. You wouldn't start two completely different programs. But I don't think education was really Trump's utmost concern. And that's because Trump was also not involved whatsoever with Trump Institute. Instead, he franchised his name to Irene and Mike Millen, who were serial operators of get-rich-quick schemes. Though he only licensed his name, Trump also appeared in infomercials for the Trump Institute, once again claiming that he himself handpicked instructors. Course materials for the Trump Institute contained plagiarized textbooks. Fortunately, the Millens declared bankruptcy in 2008, mainly through the investigations and lawsuits related to the Trump Institute. But the Trump Institute continued on and a Trump aide claimed that Trump was unaware of the plagiarism, but still stood by the curriculum of Trump Institute. Next up, from 2006 to 2009, Trump sued a New York Times reporter, Tim O'Brien, for libel. In 2005, New York Times reporter Tim O'Brien published the book Trump Nation, where he reported that basically Trump was lying about his net worth and was really only actually worth 150 to 250 million, as opposed to the billions that he claims. We litigated, uh, he sued me for the book, and um, during the course of a deposition in that case, we produced um, audits from his own bankers that estimated that his wealth was uh, less than a tenth of what he said it was at the time. He never puts out what, what he owes, what his debts are. He puts out inflated estima estimates of what his assets are worth, but he keeps all of his debts behind the scenes. Because of Tim O'Brien's book that claimed that Trump was not a billionaire, Trump ended up suing Tim O'Brien for $5 billion, which is one way to become a billionaire, I guess. Trump did not end up winning, but had recently said in an interview with the Washington Post editorial board that he intends to make it easier for people to sue for libel. I wonder why. In the mid 2000s, Trump was also involved with a concept called condo hotels. Condo hotels are basically a really strange business venture where people would buy condos and only use them for part of the year. And then when they weren't using the condos, the rooms would basically be rented out as a hotel. And then the developer and the condo owner would split in the profits from the hotel stays. Condo hotels turned out to be a terrible business idea and resulted in a lot of the condo owners suing. Trump claims that he didn't really have any involvement with the business and instead just kind of attached his name to it for the clout of the Trump name. But that was kind of the reason why a lot of people joined in on this new business venture. And it turns out the people that Trump ended up getting involved with were kind of super shady, some even having a criminal record. So a lot of people ended up getting scammed from this. In 2016, in FEC filings, it was found that Trump bought a lot of his own books, you know, his own books that he wrote and made, through Trump campaign money. He spent more than $55,000 buying his own book, Crippled America, How to Make America Great Again. So basically he used donor money to purchase a lot of his own books. And of course, what is a scammer to do but involve themselves in MLMs? Surprise, surprise. Yes, Trump and the Trump family was involved in MLMs. In a complaint filed in October of 2018, the Trumps were accused of misleading victims into becoming salespeople for an MLM called ACN. Businessman Donald Trump endorsed products and companies 
One such company is called ACN, which sold long distance phone services and video phones. I've been working with ACN for a few years now. Since that time, I've developed a great relationship with ACN, and the more I learn about them, the more I like and respect them. I see incredible potential in the things they're doing now. Trump even featured the company on his show, Celebrity Apprentice. ACN is described as a multi-level marketing firm, which means you buy in for $499, recruit others to buy in and sell, and you get a percentage of their income. Trump started endorsing the company some 10 years ago. The multi-level marketing company ACN charges $499 to have the business opportunity of becoming a salesperson and selling things like telephones for them. According to plaintiffs, the Trump family conned them into thinking that this was a legitimate business opportunity by saying that Donald Trump thought there was potential with this. You don't really know what you're getting into when you're going in there. Lured in part by the Trump name. Now he wishes he hadn't. He says he eventually lost thirty to fifty thousand dollars. That mid six figure income he was led to believe would be his never materialized. The real scheme of all of this, allegedly, was just so that the Trumps could walk away making millions, and secret receipts found payments to them dating from 2005 to 2015, making boatloads of money off of this MLM scheme. And lastly, I thought it would be only fair to mention that there's a lot of claims about the sinister origins of the Trump Organization's profits. The Times published a report that showed that much of the Trump Organization's profits didn't come from real estate investments, but actually came from defrauding state and federal governments through tax fraud. My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. I came into Manhattan and I had to pay him back and I had to pay him back with interest. A million dollars isn't very much compared to what I built. Our work has found that he's way off. We've identified more than 200 separate streams of revenue that was flowing from Fred Trump to Donald Trump. We've run the sort of the facts that we've uncovered past some of the top tax experts in the country and every single one of them has said, wow, this is tax fraud. ProPublica and WNYC also co-published a story that shows that many of Trump's international deals also had the hallmarks of financial fraud, including money laundering, deceptive borrowing, lying to investors, and many other potential crimes. Patterns of deceptive practices occurred in a dozen deals across the globe as the business expanded into international projects and the Trumps often participated. One common pattern visible in more than half of those transactions actions was a tendency to misstate key sales numbers. I'll include the full articles below so that you can read all about it. But ultimately, while much of Trump's real estate dealings end up falling through, Trump and the Trump family walk away making a profit. And how they do this is they get money from the investors and from the development all up front. Then when the project inevitably fails, Trump just removes his name from it, the investors lose money, and he walks away making money. And time for a speed round of all of Trump's business failures, brought to you by this TikTok by Gross Robert. Trump's stakes are the world's greatest stakes, truly in a league of their own. I think this is an event that can be tremendous and it can rival the Tour de France. We were the most successful flight this morning. We had more people than anybody else, and I think we had better service than anybody else. I want you and your family to benefit from our breakthrough health and wellness products. The scale is what brings the people. The opulence, the size, is what really is going to make the Taj Mahal, I think, the most successful hotel anywhere in the world. I think it's a great time to start a mortgage company. Trump, the game. I think you'll like it. We teach success. Yeah.
And that is the full timeline of all of Trump's alleged scams and schemes. I have to say alleged legally, though a lot of them have been proven with court documents and actual settlements where he had to pay money for committing something that was just either shady or downright illegal. I may have missed some things because there is a lot, so let me know if I did. I just wanted to cover the main points and main stories, but there is definitely a lot that Trump has done or did that is shady. And of course, there's the many controversies that have happened during his presidency, like possible Russian collusion or just Cambridge Analytica and whatever that was. But I think just the facts of his past and proven scammy behavior really tell enough of a story on their own. Overall, I think while doing research on all of this, I realized what Trump's biggest scam was. The biggest scam of all of this was Trump actually convincing some of us that he was a good businessman. Uh -oh. 